Now in Sunrise, a message from the president will be sent out via text today. Why it's critical for the entire nation. What you need to know coming up. Plus, the Imperial County Sheriff's Office is asking for help on any information relating to a possible homicide incident. A look at the investigation that's coming up. And we have the latest update on the woman accused of burglarizing a mosque in Tempe, Arizona. We'll have the details next with all these stories and more. As sunrise starts right now. You're watching Sunrise on KYMA News 11, where news comes first. Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, October 3rd, 2018. I'm Ivy Nivielovos. And I'm Blake Keller. Thanks for joining us on Sunrise this morning. Middle of the week. Middle of the week. Almost Wednesday. Friday. <laughs> And things are already starting to clear up as far as our weather uh, for us here in the desert southwest. There was still some rain in parts of um, our region in Phoenix, actually. Yes. But we'll have a couple of stories in that in just a few. Well, I was going to say, yeah. you know, we thought we had it bad here. Yeah, no, we thought we had it bad, but not. But Phoenix, no. we'll take mm -hmm. a look for sure. Yeah, all right. So let's go out and take a look at RV World. You must sky cam to check out what our weather is like for us here this morning. Now, we are still in the cooler temperatures. still dark out there as well and fairly busy for those of you just so excited to go back to work. Am I right? Very. <laughs> all right, <laughs> let's take a look at our what time that sun will rise, which is at around 6.34 a.m. We do have some very calm winds for today, but that can soon change as we get into tonight. Right now, our current temperatures, we are in the mid-70s for Yuma at 70, 75, and also our Centra and Imperial, 71 for the YPG area, and 87 in Blythe, just slightly warmer. Now, as far as today, we're going to see 87 for us here in Yuma, and also for Welton, we're going to be in the lower or 90s for all of our friends in Mexicali at 91 Imperial also 91 we're looking at 94 El Centro and for Blythe your temperatures will reach 92 degrees now for the most part of today it's going to be mostly sunny and again light winds tonight we'll talk about that more later Take a look at those border wait times so far for you this morning. We're seeing 10 minute delays in Calexico East and West, a 10 minute delay in the ready lane in Calexico East. San Luis, a little bit heavier than that. You're sitting at 40 minutes so far this morning, a 30 minute wait time in the ready lane, and we're waiting on a pending update this morning in Los Agadones. All right, well, later today, expect a text from President Trump this afternoon. It won't be a political message, but a chance for FEMA to test out a system aimed at alerting the entire nation of critical situations via text message. Karen Kaifa has details from Washington. On Wednesday, expect a text from the President of the United States. If your phone is turned on and within range of cell service at 2.18 p.m. Eastern Time, you'll get a test of FEMA's nationwide presidential alert. It's similar to notifications about amber alerts and extreme weather. You can't opt out, nor do you have to opt in. The largest service providers, Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, and T-Mobile, all participate in the program along with about 100 others. These presidential messages will only be issued in the event of a national emergency. FEMA says the parameters are clearly defined by federal law. The test was initially set for September 20th, but postponed in the aftermath of Hurricane Florence. FEMA won't collect any user data as a result of the test and won't be able to track the location of those who receive the alert. They are, however, soliciting feedback from the public. Like any emergency alert, users won't be charged for the test. By law, FEMA has to test out its alert systems nationwide every three years. The text alerts will be followed by a test on TV and radio. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. 604 is your time and your crime alert news this morning. The Imperial County Sheriff's Office is asking for any information related to a possible homicide incident. ICSO says deputies responded to the area of Ross Road and Bowker Road on October 1st, just after noon, where they located a dead body. They identified the body as 27 year old Antonio Javier Roldan from Calexico. ICSO says there was evidence at the scene that suggests the victim received multiple injuries that led to his death. That case is currently being investigated as a homicide while they wait for autopsy results. Now the two women accused of burglarizing a Tempe, Arizona mosque as they filmed uh, themselves making derogatory comments about Muslims will head to trial in December. Tahani Gonzalez and Elizabeth Donahue pled not guilty to burglary and aggravated criminal damage charges stemming from the March 4th incident at the Islamic Community Center. The two women filmed themselves as they removed flyers and Qurans from bulletin boards and shelves. Now in the video, they also referred to themselves to Muslims, excuse me, 
as devil worshippers. Well, a school shooting threat was set for today at Brawley Union High School, but according to police, uh, three suspects are now in custody. Thankfully, no firearms were recovered from the students, and the school says there is no safety concern at this time. The freshman suspect students are being held at Imperial County Juvenile Detention Center. No charges have been filed until the investigation is complete, but they were arrested on making criminal threats, which is considered a felony. Brawley Union High School has increased security and law enforcement presence. They've also implemented a crisis team for students dealing with fear or anxiety. And as always, come forward if you see or hear anything suspicious. Well, remnants of Rosa bought, he, brought heavy rainfall to the desert southwest and the AG ag community in particular is feeling its effects. Farmers who started planty, cro planting crops for the winter season in September could face some setbacks due to the storms. The biggest concern facing Yuma area farmers is a delay in planting crops. Paul Br Riley with the Yuma Center of Excellence for Desert Agriculture explained that within the fresh produce industry, farmers need to plant every day to harvest every day or it leads to more issues down the road. That means on the back end when we're harvesting, we're going to have a week with no supply and so um, we won't be able to supply the Costco's and the Safeways and the Subways that need fresh product every day. Well, this could mean higher prices for a short amount of time on fresh produce products like lettuce and also Bri Briley will even pointed out that while driving around, he didn't even notice tractors. Further illustrating the haul in production, 80 to 90 percent of the leafy greens that supply Americans are, har are harvested right out of the Yuma area. Well, remnants of Tropical Depression Rosa brought unusual heavy rainfall to the southwest. You're looking at emergency officials in Phoenix rescuing a woman from a vehicle stranded in high waters Tuesday. The storm is expected to impact millions of people, some who aren't even accustomed to this amount of rain. Rosa is causing flooded streets in many desert cities in the greater Phoenix metro area. Flash flood watches are in effect for much of the region uh, through this morning even. Well, 607 is your time developing. It's not something that you'll see on the shelf in the toy department anytime soon. Yeah, a group of California middle school students create a board game that is drawing criticism for some parents. Amanda Brandy says more. Cesar Chavez Middle School prides itself on a safe, positive learning environment that promotes respect. But a parent here says that wasn't the case in recent weeks. I screamed a lot of uh, expletive words um, and basically felt like I wanted to throw up because it was so um, disheartening. That was this mother's reaction when her son showed her his group project. The assignment was to create a board game, and the students designed one called Deportation Time. Basically themed as the desert and the Mexican flag. It just kind of made my stomach turn. Danielle, who did not want to give her last name, shared the game rules. The objective is to be the first player crossing the border into the United States while trying to avoid Border Patrol checkpoints. And it's mandatory to blow up the border wall to cross. Really feel like the teacher should be held accountable for this because one, she missed an, a, a wonderful teaching opportunity to, to tell kids, you know, this isn't the correct way to think about this subject. Danielle says the board game theme was approved by the teacher and that she provided no comments when handing it back. Danielle says her son tried to push the group in a different direction. I was really, really proud that he um, stuck his neck out there to show it to me, to show, you know, exactly why he felt uncomfortable. And she's talking about it now to try and set an example for her kids. Amanda Brandeis, 10 News. Well, back here at home, the deadline to register to vote for the 2018 general election is coming up quick. The general election this year is set for November 6. Now, if you want to vote in Arizona, you must register by Tuesday, October 9th. Voters can check their voting status online at Service Arizona or at the local recorder's office in downtown Yuma. Your last day to request an early ballot is October 26. In California, voters must register no later than October 22nd. That can be done at the Imperial County Register of Voters Office or online at registertovote.ca.gov. And with voting registration going on, be on alert as you may be a target for scammers. The Arizona Secretary of State says be wary of online sites or phone calls offering voter registration services because they may be collecting and then selling your personal information. If it looks or sounds fishy, it's always better to be cautious and don't be afraid to ask questions. 
Well, Yuma International Airport is now offering connecting flights to Dallas Fort Worth International. Starting in March of 2019, those going to the East Coast will now have a much easier time traveling to that region. The new aircraft will be a CRJ 900 that gives passengers additional first class seating with 64 seats in economy and about nine seats in first class. Over the past few years, we've seen several flights come and go, but authorities are hoping this flight sticks around. This benefits Yuma because today, going to Phoenix, some people may say that the connectivity is a little bit tough out of there or they have to wait for two or three hours or four hours before they can get to their East Coast connectors. Um, going into Dallas-Fort Worth, now they're looking at connectivity to about 95 additional domestic flights. Uh, on top of that, 42 international flights. Now, the process of adding another connecting flight to the Yuma Airport has been four years in the making. You can start booking flights as soon as this weekend. All right, very cool. Well, the Yuma Police Department is giving the community a unique opportunity to discuss community issues this morning. News 11's Ariana Shell joins us live at Goldsboro Bakery to tell us more about how you can get a coffee with a cop. Ariana, good morning. Good morning, Blake and Ivany. This morning I'm at Goldsboro Bakery where until 10 o'clock everybody from the community can come by and get coffee with a cop. Now this is a super special opportunity because not a lot of people get such a chill environment to be able to ask cops questions and Border Patrol is here, a Yuma Police Department is here and right here I have Sergeant Alea with me. Sergeant Alea, I'm gonna ask you a couple questions. Sure. The first one is what is one misconception most people have about cops that you would like to break down? So I'm stealing this from one of my officers, but he said that all cops do is eat donuts and drink coffee. And that's absolutely not true. Um, we eat everything, so <laughs> no. no the, a big misconception is that police are out there just to arrest people and, you know, um, give tickets. You know, I was, I was reading something on social media the other day. There was a, a gentleman complaining about uh, getting, speeding ticket, getting a speeding ticket and, uh, you know, he was, he was asking, you know, is there a quota out there? There's, there's no quotas. We don't do that. Um, we don't just arrest people um, for no reason. You know, we're out there to help the community and, and some people in the community understand that. You know, our, our job is an all-encompassing um, job that, that requires that we do, you know, just a variety of different things. We just had the, uh, the, the hurricane come through and, I mean, we were busy with, with calls for service that, you know, weren't police related, but we take care of several things in this community to keep the community safe. You know, public safety is always going to be there for the community and, you know, we're not here just to arrest criminals and, and, uh, and write tickets. You know, we're here to help. Great. Thank you so much, Sergeant Alea. Okay, so Goldsboro Bakery is on South Avenue A, and until 10 o'clock this morning, make sure you come by and get coffee with the cop and ask any questions that you feel free. All right, I'm live at Goldsboro Bakery. I'm Ariana Shell, News 11 with Sergeant Alea. Back to you, Blake and Ivany. All right, thank you so much, Ariana. Well, here's what's still ahead on Sunrise. The investigation of sexual misconduct allegations against Supreme Court nominee Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Could it be wrapping up soon? I'm Tracy Potts. That's next. Now, your weather authority local forecast. Welcome back to Sunrise. Your time is 6.16 this morning. Here's a live look outside your RV World Yuma Sky Cam. Still a little dark, but it looks very beautiful and kind of creepy as we head into Halloween season, right? But other than that, that's just because the sun's not out. It's expected to be out at around 6.34, so in a few minutes. Let's take a look at your current temperatures for us here, starting with Yuma in the mid-70s at 75, similar to Imperial and El Centro, 87 in Blythe, 71 for the YPG area. We're seeing light winds for today, but those may pick up later on for tonight. We'll get to that in just a moment, but right now here's our highs. Pretty much all across the board, we're seeing lower 90s for Blythe and 91 for Imperial Mexicali, 90 in El Centro, and then the upper 80s for Yuma, 87, Welton as well. Now, as far as tonight goes, it looks like we do have a 20% chance of rain, so we still have a slight chance of rain there, and the temperatures are dropping even more. We are in the upper 60s, pretty much ranging all across the board from Blythe at 68 to 67 Mexicali and 69 for Yuma. Now, let's take a look at that eight-day weather forecast for us here in Yuma tomorrow Thursday and the next couple of days we're going to be in the 
upper 80s and it's not until we get to Sunday with our winds pick up. We're starting to see cooler temperatures ahead of next week. As far as the Imperial Valley area goes, we're also in the upper 80s for tomorrow and Thursday and also windy conditions that's expected for this weekend. We'll talk more about this later in our show. I'll send it back to you, Blake. All right, well, coming up on News 11 Sunrise and your Healthline report, the national report card on youth physical activity is out. What the final grade was, that's still to come. The Dream to Design Studio is brought to you by Houston's Yuma Furniture. Ask about their free design services for your home today. Welcome back to Sunrise, turning now to politics and into Washington where the FBI investigation of Supreme Court nominee Judge Brett Kavanaugh could wrap up any moment now. We're getting word it may end early. Well, this as President Trump draws criticism for mocking Kavanaugh's accuser. Tracy Potts is live on Capitol Hill this morning with the latest. Tracy. Blake and Ivany, two sources familiar with the investigation, told us last night it could be wrapping up then. So this morning we wait to see if the FBI is done and what they found. Sources are telling NBC the FBI could end its investigation of sexual misconduct allegations against Judge Brett Kavanaugh days ahead of schedule without interviewing his accuser, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, President Trump mocking Ford's testimony at a rally last night in Mississippi. How did you get home? I don't remember. How would you get there? I don't remember. Where is the place? I don't remember. How many years ago was it? I don't know. I don't know. But I had one beer. That's the only thing I remember. Ford's lawyer calls it a vicious, vile, and soulless attack as lawmakers await the FBI's report. They'll read it as quickly as they can, and uh, but that'll not be used as another reason for delay, I can tell you that. Republicans insist on a vote this week. That process would have to start today. What we need to do is wait for the FBI. Lawmakers anxious to compare the FBI's findings to Kavanaugh's testimony. If you say, well, maybe he's telling the truth and maybe he's not, he doesn't belong on the Supreme Court. We've confirmed at least four people have been interviewed so far. Dr. Ford's attorneys write it's inconceivable to end this investigation without talking to the woman who started it all. Kavanaugh supporters say it's inconceivable to them that this investigation is even happening. From Washington, Tracy Potts, News 11, Sunrise. Ivan Ian Blake. All right, Tracy, thanks for that update. 6.22 is your time. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is headed to North Korea with plans to meet with Kim Jong-un on Sunday. He's expected to lay the groundwork for a second summit between Kim Jong-un and President Trump. Of course, the issue at hand is North Korea's de uh, denuclearization. Whether North Korea has made any substantial changes on that front is unclear, but Trump and Pompeo have been telegraphing the possibility of a second summit for several weeks now. In the meantime, U.S. officials have expressed frustration and North Korea's evasions of sanctions, but Pompeo and Trump has said that the U.S. campaign to exert maximum pressure on Pyongyang will continue, and Trump has repeatedly claimed progress. Pompeo will also travel to Japan, South Korea, and China on his swing through Asia. Well, a new government watchdog report says the Trump administration's family separation policy had major problems. Natasha Chen explains why Homeland Security says that report is flawed. In June, images of children separated from their parents at the border haunted both the public and elected officials. A new report from the Inspector General for the Department of Homeland Security says DHS was not ready to implement President Trump's zero-tolerance policy on immigration or deal with the dire consequences. The report says Customs and Border Patrol detained 861 children who'd been separated from their parents for longer than the legally allowed 72-hour period. DHS also struggled to identify, track, and reunify families due to limitations with its information technology systems. DHS provided inconsistent information to people who arrived with children, so some parents didn't understand they'd be separated from their kids or be unable to communicate with them once they'd been separated. In a memo, DHS defended the actions of Customs and Border Patrol and blamed another agency, Health and Human Services, for detention delays. A DHS spokesperson says it's difficult to enforce broken immigration laws. Quote, this administration will no longer turn Turn a blind eye to illegal immigration and will continue to refer illegal border crossers for prosecution. We are committed to enforcing the rule of law. The administration had reversed course on family separations by June 20th. As of last week, the government still has custody of 355 children separated from their parents.
Well, in your Healthline news this morning, admit it, you've eaten fast food recently. Mm -hmm. Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I can say I'm a little guilty, too. All right. Well, according <laughs> to a new study by the Centers for Disease Control, more than a third of all Americans eat fast food today and yesterday and the day before that. Now, every day, almost 85 million Americans consume fast food. Exactly who is eating all this fast food may surprise you. Poor diets are often associated with poverty, but this study actually found the more money you make, the more likely you are to eat at fast food restaurants. Researchers also discovered fast food consumption tends to decrease with age. Yeah, African Americans are the most likely to eat fast food, followed by Caucasians, then Hispanics, and Asians consuming the least. Americans tend to turn to take out most for lunch and least for breakfast with dinner in the middle. Experts continue to warn fast food is often high in sodium and calories while low in nutritional value. It's linked to obesity, heart disease and diabetes. Well, the national report card on youth physical activity is out and it's not one to display on the fridge. The National Physical Activity Plan Alliance gave kids 17 and younger a D minus when it comes to overall physical activity. Nearly a quarter of kids were active for the recommended 60 minutes each day. A third also reported two hours or less of screen time and the research also found that there were gaps when it came to gender, race, and also age and ethnicity and household income. income. Well 626 is your time so much more still ahead on Sunrise. We'll see you back here in just a few. Now on sunrise, major flooding in Phoenix, leaving drivers either stranded or risking it all. How they're handling the historic rainfall, that's still to come. And the federal government will conduct an emergency tax alert system today, when you can expect it and what it will say. Those details ahead. Plus, coming up on Sunrise Sports, Yuma and Gila Ridge opened up for a Southwest Volleyball play against one another. We'll bring you those highlights and results. All this and more as we're back on Sunrise. You're watching Sunrise on KYMA News 11, where news comes first. Welcome back to Sunrise. It's Wednesday, October 3rd, 2018. I'm Ivany Villalobos. And I'm Blake Keller. Thanks for joining us on Sunrise this morning. 6.30 is your time developing right now. When you say flooding, it's not the first word that comes to mind when people think of Arizona, but the Phoenix area has just been battered by heavy rain. Yeah, that has led to flash floods that are, are causing some areas and motorists to alter their routes. Nicole Valdez has that story. I haven't seen it like this before, actually. Locals know the wash on Spur Cross Road fills with water every time it rains, but you never know how bad it's going to get until it does. It just makes me nervous. I don't want to be one of those people that does something foolish. Susie Schultz didn't take the chance even while the road was still open. When you see the sign, pay heed to what they're saying. Play it safe is the name of the game. But the rain wasn't letting up, so town officials made the call. Some drivers didn't know what to do. Some, like Susie, turned right around. Others stood, waited, and even got out of their cars to check it out. We caught dozens of drivers who ignored the signs. Sean McCollum was one of them. Some people may say I'm stupid, but um, I mean, it's not bad now. This is probably about 12 inches or so right now. He says this is no big deal compared to what he's seen before. And after one person did it, it seemed like everyone was on board. Depends on how bad you want to get home. I mean, it's don't risk your life, but if you think you could do it, you know, go slow, don't hit it hard. But taking that risk is totally on you. You could have to pay up if you don't make it and need to be rescued. Well, several motorists have had to be rescued from those flooded streets in that area. Well, 632 is your time in your crime alert news. This morning, the Imperial County Sheriff's Office is asking for any information related to a possible homicide incident. ICSO says deputies responded to the area of Ross Road and Bowker Road on October 1st, just after noon, where they located a dead body. They identified the body as 27-year-old Antonio Javier Roldan from Calexico. ICSO says there was evidence at the scene that suggests the victim received multiple injuries that led to his death. The case is being investigated as a homicide while they wait for autopsy results.
Three students accused of threatening a school shooting at Brawley Union High School uh, for today are now in custody and thankfully no firearms were recovered from the students and the school says there is no safety concern at this time. The freshmen are being held at the Imperial County Juvenile Detention Center. No charges have been filed yet until the investigation is complete, but they were arrested on making criminal threats, which is a felony. We have not recovered any weapons uh, for this incident yet. Uh, we continue to, to investigate um, and thankfully from what we can tell they did not have access to weapons but we cannot confirm uh, that there were no weapons at all uh, and we continue to look for those. Well, Brawley Union High School has increased security and law enforcement presence. They've also implemented a crisis team for students dealing with fear or anxiety. And as always, come forward if you do see or hear anything suspicious. And Border Patrol agents in Welton arrested four Mexican nationals accused of bringing in multiple bundles of marijuana into the United States. It happened near Gila Bend. BP agents made the arrest after they saw the four men trying to avoid detection. Agents say the men were wearing camouflage and carpet on the bottom of their shoes. Border Patrol says the marijuana has a value of over $75,000. All four men will be processed for immigration violations. Well, new this morning, the two women accused of burglarizing a Tempe, Arizona mosque as they filmed themselves making derogatory comments about Muslims will head to trial in December. Tahani Gonzalez and Elizabeth, Do Elizabeth Donahue pled not guilty to burglary and aggravated criminal damage charges stemming from the March 4th incident at the Islamic Community Center. The two women filmed themselves as they removed flyers and Qurans from bulletin boards and shelves. And in the video, they also refer to Muslims as devil worshippers. Well, the report paints a grim picture about the treatment of immigrant detainees at a detention center in California. It details an unannounced visit by the Office of Inspector General for the Department of Homeland Security in May. Now, pictures from the report show bed sheets made into nooses that hung in many of the cells. A detainee was also quoted as saying, I've seen a few attempted suicides using the braided sheets by the vents, and then the guards would laugh at them and call them suicide failures. It's a report that ACLU describes as scathing. Well, some of the details that are in the OIG's report are truly horrifying. You know, in, in some circumstances, you have detainees being left in wheelchairs for days at a time without even being able to get some assistance to be moved to their beds. I mean, these remarks and the types of conditions that they've uncovered in the report show utter contempt for the safety and well-being for the detainees held there. Immigration and Customs Enforcement released a statement saying, quote, ICE takes seriously the OIG's findings and has agreed to conduct a full and immediate review of the center to ensure compliance with detention standards and expedite necessary corrective actions. Well, happening today, the federal government will conduct a test of President Trump's emergency text alert system today. Most cell phone users will get a non-political emergency test message from the president. It's a part of FEMA's system to warn citizens in case of national emergencies. The text will have a header reading presidential alert. The message will read, this is a test of the national wireless emergency alert system. No action is needed. The test was originally supposed to take place on September 20th. It is expected to be sent out after 11 o'clock this morning. It was delayed due to the federal government's response to Hurricane Florence. This will be the first national test of the wireless emergency alert system, which was launched in 2012. Well, heads up for voters, the deadline to register to vote for the 2018 general election is coming up quickly. The general election this year is set for November 6th. If you want to vote in Arizona, you must register by Tuesday, October 9th. Voters can check their voting status online at Service Arizona or at the local recorder's office in downtown Yuma. Your last day to request an early ballot is October 26th. And in California, voters must register no later than October 22nd. That can be done at the Imperial County Register registrar of voters office or online at register to vote dot ca dot gov. Well, 637 is your time. We're going to switch gears to sports this morning. Yes, the AWC women's soccer team is one ranking away from literally being on top while Gila Ridge volleyball gets the best of Yuma. Yeah, News 11 sports director Rob Fram joins us for this edition of Sunrise Sports. <laughs> Good morning, Rob. Well, good morning to you as well. And you know what? I think I heard a rumor that it was someone's birthday today. Ooh. Yeah. 
You know, those rumors get around, that's for sure. All right, let's start with two of AWC's sports programs that remain in the national rankings midway through their respective fall campaigns. We start with the women's soccer team who have flat out excelled under first year head coach Nicola Costa as they have risen to number two in all the land thanks to an unbeaten record of 13-0. Last night's much anticipated rematch with 19th ranked Paradise Valley has been postponed to October 20th due to the inclement weather from the remnants of Rosa. Meanwhile, despite the youth movement, the football team is sitting at number 15 thanks to a road win at Glendale this past Saturday. Well, turning our attention to prep volleyball, both the ULA Criminals and the Gila Ridge Hawks are seeking after strong finishes since both teams have had their struggles this fall. They would open up before a Southwest section play against one another last night as Trisha Ellsworth and the Hawks would host Ann Conaway and the Lady Criminals in the first match of this year's series. We pick it up in the third. You miss Stephanie Ruiz set for Alexis Andrade, who puts his volley in the sweet spot. But the Lady Crims still trail in the set. Off the Jordan Caddy serve, Brianna Owens return volley doesn't get returned. But Yuma still down eight points. The Hawks would pretty much take it from here. Kaylin Ellsworth serves it up to Haley Matthews, whose kill shot, woo, too hot to handle. The Ridge assault continues. Kimberly Rascon is going to set for Ellsworth, who gives her own special delivery on the back end. Ellsworth had five kills and eight assists on the night. Then enter Rascon, who drops the serve bomb. That was straight up bombdiculous. Nice ace by Rascon. Then off the Keddy dig, Rascon sets for Ellsworth, who puts the nail in Yuma's coffin. Ridge takes it in three sets, 25-12, 25-11, and 25-11. Well, here's a peek at our lineup of week number eight of FNL, where we have six contests, all headlined by our marquee matchup between Southwest and Central, a.k.a. the Battle for El Centro. We invite you to join us this Friday night. We certainly look forward to seeing you then. And finally, in this week's episode of Small Town Smack Talk, Longtime Cebola cross country and track coach Chris Norton stops in and you'll get his perspective on coaching running greats like Bernie Montoya. You can catch his podcast on our website, kyma.com. All right, we're done with this round of Sunrise Sports and, I, you know, happy birthday. I'm, I'm not going to name names, but I'm going to say happy birthday. Thank you so much, Rob. That's so sweet. <laughs> All right, well, 640 is your time. Yuma International Airport will now offer connecting flights to Dallas Fort Worth International Airport. Flights will begin March of 2019. The new aircraft will be a CRJ 900, giving passengers additional first class seating with 64 seats in economy and nine seats in first class. Authorities say they hope this flight sticks and the process of adding another connecting flight to the Yuma International Airport has been uh, been four years in the making. You can start booking your trip this weekend. All right, well, coming up on Sunrise, the Vegas gunman from the Las Vegas mass shooting had not spoken to his younger brother in a decade. But since the massacre, it's been a haunting for him. And how he's now describing life, we'll have that interview next. You're watching Sunrise on KYMA News 11, where news comes first. look this morning. It's been one year since the deadliest U.S. shooting in history. Many still trying to understand why. Yeah, one person in particular, Bruce Paddock, the younger brother of Stephen Gunman, of Gunman, excuse me, Stephen Paddock, who says he's been haunted by the incident since that day happened. Carolyn Johnson has more. Thank you for letting me tell people that I convey my most sincere apologies if I could have stopped it or had anything to do with it, I would have. One year after the worst mass shooting in modern U.S. history, Stephen Paddock's younger brother, Bruce, is still reeling, unable to understand why. He was never violent. That's why I have such a hard time believing he was involved in it. He woke up to news of the massacre on television. And I saw that Stephen Paddock came up as the name. And I called my mom, and she said, I guess so. It made no sense to him. Not that I had a real close relationship with him, but at one time he was my big brother. And he was a, quite a bit older than you and really was uh, something of a father figure, wasn't he? Yeah, he was the one that 
picked us up from school. Bruce says his older brother had a fascination with guns, beginning with a 357 Magnum he bought at 18. He wanted to be an FBI agent and carry a gun, and then he was IRS and he wanted to carry a gun. But Bruce never found his brother's gun collecting unusual or frightening. Steve was never one to harm anybody. I was the one that fought. But harm he did, murdering 58 people, injuring hundreds more, and changing countless lives forever. Bruce can only guess as to why. He lost all his money playing games and being foolish. But why not take his own life rather than do what he did? Because he wants to punish the casinos. He wants to punish them for the money they took from him. He's taking money back from them. This is the only thing I could possibly reason. A possible reason for an unexplainable action no one will ever truly understand. Six forty six is your time now looking around the world Tuesday airline workers protested for better wages and union rights. This is video at Los Angeles International Airport. Just one of 40 protests in 13 countries with everyone from baggage handlers to janitors to secretarial staff and security. They said that they're underpaid and that they're calling for more union rights and safer workplaces. John F. Kennedy International, LaGuardia and Newark Liberty International airports recently raised the minimum wage to $19 an hour. Minimum wage at LAX is set to increase to $17 an hour by 2021. Well, back in June, Apple talked up the possibility of college student ID cards making the move to iPhone, and now it's happening at three universities. So students at Duke, the University of Alabama, and the University of Oklahoma can now access and use digital ID cards stored in their Apple wallet on an iPhone or Apple Watch. Now, the digital ID, among other things, lets students enter buildings without their physical card, as well as pay for food from a meal plan. But Excuse me, by the end of the school year, Johns Hopkins, Santa Clara University, and Temple University will also support that digital ID. I like this, especially if you were to ever lose your card, it was like a $10 replacement fee. Oh, it's 25 at my university. Oh. <laughs> I made sure to never lose that, but definitely on the phone. Yeah. You'll never use, lose it of unless course. you lose your phone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we're still ahead on sunrise. We're taking one last look at your weather forecast. Mostly sunny for today. What we can expect for tonight, though, right after the break. Now, your Weather Authority local forecast. Welcome back to Sunrise. Thanks for sticking with us this morning. Your time now is 651. We're going to get a check on the weather with Ivany Villalobos. Definitely uh, a different day today, probably for the rest of the week compared to earlier this week. Yeah, and something also to look forward to is we're going to have a new moon. So with that, Ooh. you can, you know, make that as your new moon, new me type of thing. <laughs> uh, Good but for not pictures. Exactly, for pictures. Good. So speaking about pictures, look at this shot right here. So pretty with that sun gleaming out in the background of those clouds. These clouds are just in the way, you know. Thanks to our director for choosing this particular side of the desert southwest. So let's take a look at your current temperatures for us here this morning in the mid 70s, pretty much for Imperial, El Centro and for Yuma 71 in the YPG area. We're looking at the upper 80s in Blythe at 87. Now for today's highs for us here in Yuma, we are seeing those upper 80s and it's going to be mostly sunny. We just saw a shot right now of that RV World Yuma Sky Cam with the loud with all those clouds for us here this morning. So later on for tonight's forecast, so we will be in the lower 70s. Earlier we saw 69. Now we're looking at more at 73 for tonight's forecast with a 20% chance of rain. Our humidity levels are still up. We're looking at 93% and calm winds as well. All right, so let's take a look at this bus stop forecast. I know a lot of students are returning back to the classroom, getting back into the school routine, you know, midweek. So we're looking at later on this morning, the temperature is rising to 77. And then around lunchtime, it's going to be nice and cool at 84. And then later on in the evening hours, those temperatures will reach 85 degrees. All right, in your AJ weather forecast, everyone, for the next couple of days, upper 80s for our highs so something to look forward to especially for those of you who like to take that nice jog outside it won't be as hot as we usually have it uh, here in the desert southwest but for sunday those when we start to see those winds pick up to up to 20 miles per hour 
and then we're going to see also clear skies ahead of this week and on to next week as well. We do see a drop in our temperatures come Sunday, Monday and Tuesday at 83 and then we're seeing 85 for Wednesday and Thursday. We're seeing 84 degrees so nice an average of between 83 and 85 for our highs in the next for next week. Excuse me. All right. So for the Imperial Valley area, also in the upper 80s for Thursday and Friday, we see the lower 90s for Saturday and those winds expected to reach 25 miles per hour and then just slightly slower at 20 miles per hour for Sunday. The temperatures will be in the mid 80s at 85 and then as we see here Monday on Columbus Day 84 are your temperatures and what we can expect for Tuesday and Thursday of next week is in the upper 80s. All right that sun will set at around 620 later this afternoon and the temperatures will be at 87 degrees. That's here with the forecast for today. I'll send it back to you Blake. News 11's border wait times brought to you by Cocopa Casino. All right, we're seeing 30 minute wait times in Calexico East now this morning with 40 minutes in your ready lane. We're seeing a 10 minute or less delay in Calexico West and then San Luis. You're sitting at about an hour, 50 minutes to an hour, 40 minutes in your ready lane right there and a pending update in Los Agadones. Well, happy birthday, Ivany. Oh my goodness. We love us. So, Hi, thank you. Yes, so, <laughs> yes, we say thank you for the constant laughs in the morning and for showing us what a great friend truly is. So enjoy Aww. your birthday. Love the morning team. So, you guys are too sweet. We love you. I want to cry, but I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I'm not a cry baby. Oh, no. <laughs> oh you're so Yay, sweet. Thank you so you're much. You're welcome. I love also, having you here. Also a big hug to the viewers. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I already got a couple of comments, so oh, thank yeah? you guys. Okay, yes. yes. Go wish her a happy birthday on her Facebook page. and. <laughs> All that stuff, so yay, <laughs> we'll be celebrating. But we do have a birthday winner today, so congratulations to Jimmy Torres. So be sure to check your email for your next steps to get your Cold Stone Creamery ice cream cake. Of course, if you'd like to give a birthday shout out, head over to our website, kymacom slash contest. All right, well, before we go, Applebee's is serving up a treat just in time for Halloween. The restaurant chain is rolling out a zombie drink for just a dollar. Ooh, That's pretty cheap. All right, the rum cocktail features a gummy brain <laughs> for a garnish. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And the cocktail is served in a 10 ounce mug and comes available in four flavors, which is pineapple, passion fruit, cherry, and lime. Wow, yeah, the drink is part of Applebee's Neighborhood Drink of the Month promotion. It is available to customers through Halloween. Applebee's said the dollar zombie is the first time the chain reached out to customers for input on its neighborhood drink of the month. Oh, I'm, a, I'm surprised they didn't ask for our opinion. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but they got it spot on. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm totally down for the We should try gummy. all four flavors. That's $4 right there, yeah. $1 each. Unless you tip, then, you know. $6. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yum, that sounds really good. Yes, and I, I, I think that's the promotion's great because, you know, Sometimes drinks can get a little expensive on the tab. That's true, and especially especially when they're specialty drinks. Mm -hmm. And the fact that this Halloween specialty drink yes. is a dollar makes it even more exciting and fun to go visit right. the place. Well, speaking of Halloween. Oh yeah, speaking of well, Halloween, Halloween is right around the corner and the National Retail Federation says about $9 billion will be spent on holiday candy. And a new candy store dot com state by state study says a Grand Canyon state's favorite Halloween candy is Blake? Ooh, Snickers. Ooh. Yeah, mm, so I the like study Snickers. gathered data for the past <laughs> decade looking at the best sell sellers of candy prior to Halloween. Now candy is measured in pounds eaten by each state. Arizonans eat nearly 956 thousand pounds of Snickers. Ooh. Hot tamales and Hershey Kisses came in in second and third place. For California, <laughs> Skittles is their favorite candy. They ate almost 1.6 million pounds of Skittles. I probably eat that in a year. Ah, they forgot Reese's Pieces. <laughs> <laughs> is that those. your favorite? Yeah, anything with peanut butter. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it for us here at News 11 Sunrise. I'm Blake Keller. And I'm Ivy Villalobos. Have a great day.